now that we're done with while loops, let's move to the fourth and final form of control flow. This is going to be our for in or for each loops. So we're going to head over to main activity and we're just going to write our code down at the bottom here, keeping all the old code from before. So for in loops, I think uh, for in is probably a better term than for each, at least with Kotlin, run kind of similar to while loops in that it's a way to execute certain statements over and over again, a set number of times, but the syntax and the usage is very slightly different. Whereas while loops are a little more open-ended, for in or for each loops are run a set number of times and are specially designed for iterating through arrays or ranges of numbers. So for that reason, I'm actually going to launch right into an example that has to do with an array. So we actually don't have any arrays set up. And by array, I mean you could use a list as well. In fact, perhaps a list would be best. I did preach that you should use non-musable lists where possible. So let's have a list of names. Um, let's call this, let's call this our roster. Okay, this is just going to be a list of, um, it's going to be a list of strings. And let's say we have a bunch of names. Again, I'll start with mine. So we have like Susie, so we have Jack, and let's say we have Jill. Okay, good stuff. So what I want to do is I want to iterate through each of the items within this list, and I want to combine it all into one long string that is going to be names string, okay? It's going to be a string, and we're just going to set it equal to a blank string for now. So I'm not sure exactly why I want to do this, but I just want to take each of the names and I want to add a space and then stick the other, or maybe a comma and then a space and then stick the other names onto the end of it. Okay, so I'll have one long string with all of the names. In our case, we could actually do this by hand, it's pretty easy, there's only four items, but again, what if our list was a hundred or a thousand or a million items long? Well, then we'll want to do, uh, want to use a loop to do that for us, which we could do with a while loop, but there's a better tool for that. So a for in loop is designed to iterate through every element within an array and then perform some kind of an action on that. So what we could do is set up like this for name in roster and just bear with me a sec here. We're going to take our names string and we're going to say plus equals name and then we're going to say uh, actually you know what we're going to say plus equals name plus and then something else we'll have the comma and then the space. Okay, and this would give us our final result. I mean, the last iteration would actually stick this onto the end, which is kind of annoying, but we could fix that if we wanted to. So this is actually accomplishing exactly the same task as we wanted, but with slightly cleaner syntax and a while loop and just generally fewer lines. So what is going on within this loop? Well, we're getting this list roster. Okay, it's typically a list or a range of numbers. And we're going to say for each of the items in roster, we're going to call it name. Okay, so as it gets to each of these four strings, name takes on that value, and then we're just adding this and then moving to the next iteration. So for the first iteration, name is equal to Nimish, we're adding that to name strings. Second iteration, name is equal to Susie, adding that to name strings, then Jack, then Jill, and so on and so forth. Now for loops are perfect, for in loops are perfect for iterating through lists because it's guaranteed to start at the beginning and end with the final element and again it's guaranteed to visit every single element within that array which means it's never going to skip anything, it's never going to run out of bounds and it's always going to start at the beginning. So like I said this makes it perfect for lists or ranges of numbers whereas while loops are a little more open ended and a little more suited to slightly more complex tasks. All right, so I mean, if you can understand while loops pretty well, then for loops are actually even simpler to understand. The syntax is just a little cleaner. So what I'd recommend you do is try again some more lists of your own and some more for loops of your own. I think the best way to solidify these concepts is to practice them right after you learn them. And if you run through a few examples of your own and can, you know, print some values out to see how things are working, that's probably best. So maybe a good way to start off would be for uh, name in roster. Maybe you can log name. So do like log dot d and then say I don't know like main activity and then print off name okay and this would again be you know pretty good place to start so play around with your for loops a little bit make sure you're comfortable with these and while loops before moving on to the next topic and the next topic is going to be our functions texts so just like before I'm going to take all of this code we're going to move it all over to our where is it our control flow texts so we can start from a clean slate Thank you.